why I'm defending Fuck Jay anyway Fuck Jay Moore Fuck him and his successful fucking career You know what that'll be my goal for the next The next year By November of next year I want to be the best podcast in a five-mile radius of Fontana, California. I very well may be right now, but it's always good to have goals. And in a couple of years, she'll be knocked up and you'll both be fucking miserable living with each other. And then you have to, and then you're stuck raising a kid that's going to turn out to be another fucking dysfunctional member of society anyway. So just give it up now. Wow. Such a cynical approach to life. My name is Wes Rodriguez, and you're listening to the Sink or Swim Wednesday show. Yeah, baby. All right. Well, it's an early Wednesday afternoon, and... Work slows down once in a while at the warehouse, and they will lay us off for one day just to save a budget on delivering to the stores when they can just hold on to it and let the freight build up so it's more financially advantageous. And so thusly, I'm at home jumping on the podcast a little early. And I took the opportunity to uh, go to my comic book shop I've been putting it off for a few weeks, and uh, my pulls have added up. I have fucking, I had like an $85 bill, and uh, it's a very cool comic book shop. Let me just give them a shout out. That's Four Color Fantasies in Rancho Cucamonga. I was told at the counter when I came to visit today, five times in a row, winners of the best comic book shop in the Inland Empire. Which is a damn cool title to hold. But immediately I'm embarrassed to mention the Inland Empire. Only because of the fact I've been listening to fucking Jay Moore's podcast. And he does a lot of stand-up. And every time he comes to the Inland Empire, uh, he just can't help but bash it. So his go-to fucking horrible place to perform is fucking Ontario Improv or or. People are scumbags or hillbillies or it's just every time he wants to throw a race under the bus, he'll just pull Fontana out of the air. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure there is a, 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 a dominating. If I had to declare what is the dominating social class or ethnicity for Fontana, it'd be lower to middle class Latin. I suppose, but you're butted right up against Rialto, which is predominantly black. And um, there's Upland, which is more higher class, upper crust. And that's right next to, to Fontana and Rancho. But uh, mostly it's residential or a, uh, industrial. There's a lot of warehouses and a lot of the, the streets are built to hold semis. So it's, it's more traffic than people. I mean, you got Route 66 running right through the middle of it. And Fontana is known for citrus and winery. Of course, it's changed over the years. It's become more, the area is more centered around warehousing and and distribution centers and freight transport. So I don't know why I'm defending Fontana anyway. Fuck Jay Moore. (laughs) Fuck him and his successful fucking career. I wouldn't have the balls to stand up in front of an audience anyway. But it still feels like a little jab every time fucking he wants to talk shit about an area. He always brings up Ontario or Fontana, man. That's kind of a bummer. I love listening to his podcast. But anyway, moving on back to what I was saying. The comic book shop I frequent, I was as I was saying, they are five time winning or they are the annual winners of the best comic book shop in the Inland Empire. That's five consecutive years in a row, which is pretty cool. But And I wonder if they classify podcasts. I wonder if my podcast could be in the running. 
well, that kind of grandiose thinking is, are the defects of my personality. So I, I need to be careful with that. Of course, I could shoot low. I guess, you know what, that'll be my goal for the next, the next year. By November of next year, I want to be the best podcast in a five-mile radius of Fontana, California. I very well may be right now, but it's always good to have goals. And if I set my trajectory low and my, my goal within close range, percentage of failure just drops exponentially. So I should probably translate that to my dating life. I wouldn't be so fucking bitter every time I see a couple and think evil thoughts like, I should just go up and, and tell him, dude, she's already cheating on you. And she'd rather be sleeping with her boss anyway. I don't know why you guys are so happy together. And in a couple of years, she'll be knocked up and you'll both be fucking miserable living with each other. And then you have to and then you're stuck raising a kid that's going to turn out to be another fucking dysfunctional member of society anyway. So just give it up now. Wow. Such a cynical approach to life. I need to work on my optimism. There's plenty of married guys out there that would look at me like, man, you've got it all. <laughs> I should be fucking thankful. I'm 35 years old. I can make any decision I want in my life without having any rebounding negative effects. I can date whoever I want. I can go out wherever I want to go. I can, I can spend money without having to worry about someone else being affected by it or having an opinion. I can sleep. As long as I want, I can wake up as late as I want without it affecting, without it affecting my, my employment, of course. So I really don't have much to complain about. I just don't have that much to be happy <laughs> about either. Uh, I can't help but fucking dial it back. I try to think positive and then I backpedal into the negative. It's the story of my life. But anyway, as I was saying, anyhow, five-time winner. Five-time consecutive winner. That's pretty good, man. It's a cool comic book shop. He's got a great staff there. Warm and inviting. He provides a place for the, the younger generation to come and do their, their Yu-Gi-Oh! Their, their trading card battles or whatever. And uh, the older Dungeons and Dragons generation. They come in there and play, too. And, uh... It's a warm and friendly atmosphere with like-minded individuals. It's, it's a great place to go to. And uh, whenever there's a, uh, a comic book-related movie or a superhero movie, Chris, the owner, has a connection with the local Cineplex. And he can pretty much they isolate a whole theater depending on how many customers he can get. They will adjust the size of the theater and he'll sell the tickets at the comic book shop. So when you go to watch a movie, you're sitting down next to like minded individuals. You see, this is a social group that likes to cite specific examples, you know, comb through the movie for details and significant situations and references to previous stories. That way, when they get together afterwards, they can have detailed, thought-provoking conversations about something that they all enjoyed together. That they enjoyed together, let alone that, but they all are familiar with the content and the subject matter. I could probably count on my one hand how many movies I've seen where the audience is engaged and present and are using the proper movie etiquette. We're, there's no distractions at all. You don't have fucking cell phones going off. You don't have juvenile delinquents spouting off or fucking distracting you with their their chatter or hitting the back of your seat. It's all focused fucking movie nerds. And whenever there's a scene or a climax, you the reaction is on point. And, and if there's a joke or, or a comedic reference, everybody in the theater is laughing at the same time. And they're all and they're smart individuals, so they're catching every joke. You know, barely everything, anything is flying by where you're like you're laughing ahead of time. I've I've been to plenty of movies where I get the joke and nobody else fucking gets it. It goes right over their head, and you're the one fucking person laughing out loud, and you look like an asshole because everybody around you's fucking a slack jawed, mouth breathing dullard. So you can imagine 
how healthy and dedicated Chris's clientele is at, at the Four Color Fantasies comic book shop. I mentioned it before when I interviewed him and witnessed for myself how many people turned out for free comic book day. It was in this tiny little section of the parking lot. It was packed with people. Where I grew up in the small town of, of Sunland Tahunga, the biggest thing that ever happened there was fucking the Watermelon Festival. There was way more people in this tiny little section of the of the parking lot at <laughs> at the comic book shop than there were in this huge park in fucking in between Sunland Tahunga. And uh, the quality of people was much greater too. <laughs> Face it, the cops call someone to hunger the rock for a damn good reason. I think it's dubbed the rock because of how much methamphetamine is trafficked through that fucking town. A joke, a popular joke that was told in the high school is if you gathered all the women in Tahunga together, you would have one full set of teeth. So you can imagine the quality of people that are there. Dangerous people, mind you, too. Uh, there was a chapter of the Hells Angels that was founded there. And the high school I went to, Verdugo Hills High, is referenced in the movie Things Are Tough All Over by <laughs> Cheech and Chong. So it was a little insight into the contrast of social groups that I'm comparing. So there you go, Jay Moore. Next time you want to refer to a fucking bad place to do a stand-up routine in, why don't you fucking throw out something to Hunga? Of course, if I was living there now, that's probably where he'd be referencing. That's just how, how things work out, you know? Irony. I don't know why that is. Like, wherever I'm at, it's just iconic. Things around me happen to be re referenced in the media. Or maybe that's just my, my obsessive mind paying attention to these minute details that everyone else is missing. For instance, God Bless America, the Bobcat Goldthwait production that you can watch on Netflix now. Um, there's like three places in that movie where I can point out where I've lived. And one of the uh, locations they filmed at is this shitty little motel fucking <laughs> just a few miles from where I'm at. I forgot what it's fucking called, but it's fucking teepees, like, right off the boulevard. You would think that someone would take this kind of concept and plant it in the middle of, you know, the right atmosphere, like, right off a campground, right next to a lake, not right in the middle of a fucking boulevard. Like, right in between Joe's Muffler Shop and fucking Rosie's Carniceria. The fuck is a teepee motel doing in the middle of San Bernardino? They should, like, pull up stakes and move to fucking Big Bear, where they belong. You could imagine how disgusting or fucking the kind of filth and grime that have been there. And it's weird because you see families there, too. It's not like it's, it's not inviting for like a hooker type situation that a motel should be. God damn it. Anyway, I, I think I've digressed too far on that tangent. So I feel I should do what I can to help out my friend Chris at his shop. Any of you listeners out there, if you go on, if, if you're listening to the show from the Facebook link, go ahead and enter the number four, then C-O-L-O-R-F-A-N-T-A-S-I-E-S, -E those three words up into the search engine, and drop down and give that comic book shop a vote, man. It's a fucking great place. And if any of you listeners are parents and want to get your kids into reading comics, it's a great place to go and they'll set you up. It'll give you a great launch pad to bring your kids into the to the world of comics, which is making a tremendous comeback. I'm sure everyone out there saw and loved the Avengers movie, largest grossing movie of all time. That, that's got to say something. So help my boy Chris out, guys. Do me that favor. Jump on that voting ballot and make him number one. Again, for six years in a row. All right, now I guess I'll throw it to our rewind contest. I should make a jingle for that. That's what I'll work on for next week. And real quick, the rules are for the rewind contest are listen to these clips. All these clips will be references to one specific show. 
And you can either tweet, email, or message on Facebook your answers and guesses. And whoever gets in first will get a Sink or Swim t-shirt. We'll get your information on where to send that, and we'll mail it to you. And the addresses are email at soswithwam at yahoo.com and Twitter, soswithwam. And the Facebook page is SOS space WITHWAM. So there you go, folks. Those are the rules. And now the rewind. Welcome. Come in. Have a sit down. Pull up a floor. Make yourself cozy. And enjoy. I offer you the generous tithings of podcasting. By way of my uncle, who is laughing hysterically and translating, well, she says you're gay if you don't like to eat fish. So those are the kinds of things that come out of my grandma's mouth. You know, I've always been curious. You two are known as the Mario Brothers, but your name is Mario. What is the last name that you both share? That is a funny question. You ask me, Wes? And that is the rewind for this week's show, everybody. Yeah. My name is Wes Rodriguez coming at ya. Rocking your Wednesday hotter than a platinum blonde high schooler in the 80s. Yeah. Wow, I felt really fucking greasy and disgusting doing that. But that was fun in a way. Well, I guess I'll wrap up this Wednesday edition. I, I feel weird calling it Wednesday, but I'm technically that's when I do the recording. It never goes up in time for anybody to listen to it on Wednesday, but fuck it. That's what it's called, and that's how I roll. Free fucking podcast. Suck it. Yeah. And I'll end this show with some live preservers and send you all on your way to the weekend. So see if you can implement these little notions of Good Samaritan ism into your routine and watch how the rippling effect brings it on back to you but do it just for society's sake not your own and here we go call or write your cousins immediately right off the bat i'm a fucking asshole so i i'm gonna have to call my cousins improvise when necessary unless you're doing a podcast and it's good to improvise I'm trying to work on my skills. Only love dispels hate. A 12-gauge shotgun can dispel hate. Spread a little joy. Enjoy a wide variety of foods. Thank the person at theaters who tears tickets. Recognize the small person. Unless you are that person. Then you're not a small person. You're a big person. Doing a small job. And again, I'm an asshole. Imagine living your life without being afraid to take a risk. Invite guests to your place of worship. Life is positive. Only your thinking is negative. Wow. Yeah, that embodies my mindset. I need to, I need to live with that as a present notion. And to finish it off... Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in to this week's show, folks. My name is Wes Rodriguez. For Ambrosio Nigo Montoya, what's your dream? (laughs) 